Hey, this is Steve with Dabble Lab, and this is the third video in a series that I've been working on for new Alexa developers who are also new to Node.js. And in this video, we're going to be talking about Node modules. In the um, last two videos we talked about, or in the first two videos, we talked about the asynchronous nature of Node and using callbacks, and then we talked about variables in the last video. In this video, I'm going to be building on some of those topics. So if you haven't seen those ones, you might want to check those out first and then come back to this one. So let's, um, let's dive into it. So in, uh, we're going to just jump right into uh, coding to, to uh, keep this brief. But the, um, the idea behind modules, modules are, are basically reusable code libraries that sort of act as building blocks for your application. And one of the principles behind Node is to keep Node core really efficient, small, and, and tight in terms of the functionality that it's going to provide. So there's three kinds of modules. There's built-in modules that are part of Node core, but those modules are mostly for very essential kinds of things like reading and writing to the file system, making network requests, that kind of thing. Functionality that is outside of what would be typically required as you know core essential functionality is left up to either a community or third-party modules or the developer, us, to create those modules. And so those are referred to as third-party modules, and then there are also local modules. We're not going to be talking about local modules in this video. I'm going to do that in the next video. Um, local modules, it's a great topic. It's a good way to organize code, um, but it, it's a little bit more involved, so we'll, we'll save that for, uh, for the next video. In this one, we're going to just focus on um, local and built-in modules, or not local, uh, but built-in modules and third-party modules. So let's um, let's get into it. We'll I'm going to start with an example of a built-in module and a really simple one. So first of all, when you're using modules, the way that you um, use modules, the syntax is the same for whatever type of module you're using, whether it's built-in. Uh, a local module that you create yourself or a third-party module. But I'm going to use one called uh, the URL module and you would use the node uh, module loader and the require function. So like this and then um, if it's a built-in module all you need to do is just reference the name and in this case here the name is URL. And this is a really simple built-in module. Common functionality which is why it's built-in but this this one is um, just used for parsing a, uh, the parts out of a URL string. And again, this is like pretty common, so that's why it's built in, but URL uh, parse, and we are gonna parse, actually I'm gonna copy it. Copy and paste a URL for an example that I'm gonna use in a bit. Let me see where that put it is. Okay. All right, and so um, I'm going to be using a URL that is for an endpoint on the GDAX API, and um, GDAX is a uh, it's a Bitcoin exchange or a cryptocurrency exchange, and I'm going to be using their API to uh, grab the current price of Bitcoin. And for right now we're just going to use uh, their URL as an example to illustrate kind of what's going on here with this built-in URL module. So now if I run this with just this little code here, um, example one, you can see it pulls out just the hostname api.gdax.com. And this was all functionality that was provided as part of this built-in um, URL module. So I didn't have to write any code to split this string up and you know pull out the parts. That was all part of this module. So that's a really simple example, and um, that module is a, a pretty simple module. Let me show you one that is uh, a little bit more verbose. Um, and for this second example, I'm going to use a module called um, the HTTPS module. So. There's the HTTPS module and then the HTTP module. And they are for serving up uh, content and or making requests to HTTP or HTTPS endpoints. And we're gonna be making a request to 
uh, a secure HTTPS endpoint, actually this URL that we had um, used over here. And we're going to use the uh, URL also again here, the URL internal module. Um, that. And this, uh, this module provides a lot of the heavy lifting for us, but it's, it's a pretty flexible module. So you, you end up having to write a bit of code to um, get it to do what you want. So even though it um, covers a lot of the heavy lifting, you still are going to need to write a little bit of code. Let's actually let me just copy, my copy and paste function that I wrote earlier just to save us a little bit of time. It's not important that you understand what's going on here specifically in the code, but real quickly, this is a function that I've, uh, that I've written that is going to take in a uh, parameter, which is going to be for a URL, and then the callbacks, which we talked about earlier, we use to um, uh, provide back the information that I get from that HTTP endpoint. And I'm using this HTTPS module to make that request. And I'm using, uh, passing in some parameters that are required by this request module up here, which is why I'm using the URL module, because I'm parsing out the parameters that I need from the URL string that I'm passing in. So down here, I'm calling this function that I wrote, passing in the, uh, the URL string that I want to call, and the callback is going to provide me with the response back from the API. So let's um, let's take a look. Node and example two. And so now um, I have my uh, Bitcoin price here that was pulled from the, the GDAX API. And I did that with, relatively speaking, not a whole lot of code because if I had to write all of the code that would have been necessary to make that HTTP request and uh, parse the protocol uh, in packet information to get all of the response back. It would be a lot more code than this, but this whole thing is just um, 36 lines. But that is a segue into uh, my next topic. So even though I've saved myself from having to write a lot of code using this uh, module here, there's third-party modules that will typically even make it easier. So NPM is the Node Package Manager, which is installed when you install Node. And there's, there's other package managers also, but we're just going to talk about NPM to keep this brief here. If you go to npmjs.com and you uh, search, there are literally hundreds of thousands of third-party packages. I think the count is almost up to a half a million. But you can search for um, the packages that you might be looking for based on the service. So like in this case, GDAX I'm searching or what you want to do. Maybe I, I could have just searched with the keyword Bitcoin. And the, uh, in a lot of cases, you'll find the functionality that you're looking for and you'll um, not have to write the, the, the code to get what you need. And that is the whole idea behind packages. These are shareable, reusable building blocks that make it really easy to uh, do a lot of stuff that you would have previously had to write a lot of code for. And um, from MPS, uh, NPM JS, you can get some stats about the package. And this is good for um, just uh, kind of getting a sense of how popular it is, how long it's been around. There's also documentation on how to use the, uh, the package and typically a link out to the, uh, the GitHub repository where the code exists. It's all open source code, or I, I believe it's all open source code. I'm pretty sure that it is. Uh, and for all of the uh, modules, that is. And, uh, and so um, I can jump out here and I can see how to use the module. And I'm just going to, we're just gonna, I'm gonna just copy and paste just to show you um, how this would Work. So we'll go back over our code here, and now I'm going to run out example three. Create a new example, and for this one, I'm going to just uh, copy and paste. And I'm trying to do the same thing. I want to get the uh, 
I want to get the ticker, the Bitcoin price. So I know that uh, when I look through the API docs, and uh, these are the API docs here. So these are the documentation for all the endpoints and methods that are available on the API. So um, I know that there is an endpoint for ticker. So I would just find that in here. There it is. And grab that and then go back to my code. And now um, this callback here is, remember we had uh, usually the convention is that the error is your first object. And they also have a second parameter that's not data, but it's like the uh, response. So like the HTTP response information. And then the third parameter is the data that you get back. And so again, this is stuff that we talked about in the uh, first video. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but basically this, this callback is what we're going to use to um, get the response back. And then here, I'm just going to log out or uh, write to the console log. And then which I'm pretty sure, let me just double check. Dot, make sure that is it. Get the dot price, okay. All right, so now what took 30 some odd lines of code, 32, let's see. Oh, you know what? I need to get the module. I haven't even gotten it yet. So before we run that, uh, very important. Um, so you've got to you've got to install the module before you can use it. And I didn't do that. So uh, what you want to do? This is where we're going to use npm to do this. So um, npm, and then I usually start by just doing init dash y, which just initializes my application folder with this package.json file. And this is the file that's going to be used to track the uh, the dependencies for the application and the dependencies will be added once I install the, the package that I want to use. So um, to do that, I'm going to use npm again and then install and I'm going to use the uh, save uh, parameter to tell npm to um, save a, a copy of the package locally and to register it in my package.json as a dependency. So um, npm install dash dash save and then the name of the package, which in our case is GDAX, like that. So when I run that, it is um, pulling down all of the uh, package files and you'll see the first time that you do that, npm creates a folder called node underscore modules. And if you look in there, you see a lot of stuff. So um, what you're looking at here, what you're seeing is not just the module that you loaded, but all of the modules that that module depends on. So there's kind of a, a dependency chain where if you build a module, you might use other modules to build a module. Thankfully, you don't have to think about all of this. Uh, the node package manager node make that really, really easy. So I you know, showing you that so you know what's going on, but you, you probably don't have to worry much about that. You just know that uh, you've got the module that you want. And if I go into my package.json file here, I can see that it's been uh, updated with uh, a dependency and the dependency is for the GDAX module and the version 0.70. So now I have my GDAX module so I can require it here. If I had run this before, I would have gotten an error. And uh, now I should be able to run this. So example3.js. And let's see what are we here. And there we go. Oh, 645 is not the price of Bitcoin. Ah, I see. Um, so this is just a, a parameter. So that was pulling the price of Ethereum, which is another cryptocurrency if you're not familiar with that. So now change that up and now I get the price of Bitcoin back, which is $9,100 even right now. I run it again. 
9,901. So it's gone up a dollar in the second or two that we were talking. So that is, um, that is an example of the, the value of third-party modules. So you saw here, uh, even though I was using a built-in module, I had to write a, a bit of code. And because of this third-party module, I wrote a lot less code. But within their module, they're very likely using the uh, HTTPS module. But again, these are sort of reusable building blocks that are shareable. So you can go out and find the modules that you want for your application and just save yourself a ton of time when you're uh, building your, your apps and putting together the, the functionality of your Alexa skills. So that was uh, a really quick intro. That's it for this video. We just scratched the topic on modules. This is, again, a, a really big topic. And um, there's things that you, you might want to Google and understand um, that I'll, I'll talk about in later videos, but the idea of global uh, installing module, uh, uh, node modules globally is an important topic. Uh, the Alexa Skills Kit CLI gets installed globally. Um, so if you want to Google that before the, uh, the next video, that's, that's an important topic that we didn't get into here. And then creating modules yourself, local modules. I'm going to talk about that in the next video. And that is an important one also for organizing your code and making it a lot more manageable. Well, hopefully this was helpful and uh, useful to you if it was. Please uh, like the video. If you have questions or comments, you can leave those and I'll respond just as soon as possible. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the Dabble Lab channel. Thanks so much.